11 tips to help you overcome or avoid jet lag on your next trip. By the way, if this is your first time here, my name is Chris, this is Yellow Productions. I've traveled over a million airline miles and stayed in over a thousand hotel nights, so I know a thing or two about avoiding jet lag. In this video, I'm gonna tell you what has worked for me, and first I'm gonna tell you it's not magic, but it's really all about getting your body to feel like it's in that new time zone as quick as possible. So the first tip is to pick a good flight time. Yes, a good flight time is one of the keys to help you avoid jet lag. My first tip for you for avoiding or getting over jet lag is you'll actually want to start before your trip, when you plan your trip, when you book your flights, because my first tip is to pick a good flight time. Now you might be wondering to yourself, Chris, what's a good flight time? Well, I think there's two good options. The first one is to pick a flight time that arrives in the morning in your destination. That way when you get there, you've got plenty of time for outdoor exercise, sunshine, and activities to make your body think it's in that new time zone. More about that later. Now, if you do arrive in the morning, that can be a long, exhausting day for some people. So the second best option is to pick a flight that arrives just in time so that by the time you check in, get to your hotel, you can have a quick dinner and then go to bed. Why is that important? Well, because sometimes people book flights that get them in really, really late, like 10 p.m., midnight, 2 a.m. Don't do that. You're gonna get to your hotel late. You're gonna be exhausted. You're gonna be sleeping late. Then you'll have to get up early and you'll just be in this cycle of always being tired. I like to pick arrivals where I get into someplace like Tokyo, say at 3 p.m., takes about three hours to get through the airport to my hotel at six, have a quick bite to eat, in bed by 7, 7.30 p.m. I think that's a perfect time to turn in for the night. So think about those flight times that get you in either in the morning or at nighttime as a perfect time to go to bed. My second tip for you is when you're booking your flights, book one on a good plane. What is a good plane? I really like the Boeing 787 Dreamliner, the Airbus A350, or the Airbus A380. Why are these planes better for avoiding jet lag? Because they have a much more natural cabin pressure. As newer planes, the cabin pressure is that much more like you're on the ground, and so you can sleep better on the planes, and frankly, you just end a long flight feeling a lot less exhausted than you do on other planes. How do you know what plane you're booking on? Almost every airline website will tell you what plane you're booking on so you can tell. Look for the Boeing 787, the A350, or the A380. Tip number three, if you're gonna be going on a trip that changes a lot of time zones, not just three time zones, but seven time zones, nine time zones, you know, you're going to the other side of the world, then I would encourage you to actually start preparing for your trip a few days earlier. A few days earlier, you can start shifting your sleep schedule where you're from 30 minutes each day, go to sleep a little earlier, wake up a little earlier. The next night, go to sleep a little earlier, wake up a little earlier. It will just make it all that easier when you do get to your final destination. Tip number four, rest well the night before. A lot of people spend the night before they go packing, staying up late, they figure they're gonna sleep on the plane anyway. Look, don't do that. Go to bed early, get a good night's rest because if you start from a place of good rest, it will make the whole exhausting travel experience much better. Sleeping on the plane really just doesn't recharge anybody all that well, so make sure you do that in your own bed. It, particularly if you're traveling with babies or toddlers, if they don't have enough sleep, they're never gonna get that recharge battery on the plane and they're gonna be extra cranky and it's gonna be even harder to adjust them on that time frame. So make sure you plan the night before you travel to your destination, not just to your destination, but also coming home, right? Remember that jet lag is also about coming home and so this fails people a lot of times on that last night on their vacation. They're like, I'm gonna go hog wild and then they're wiped out for three days when they came home because they didn't start their trip from a good night's rest coming home either. Tip number five, switch your watch to the new time zone as soon as you take off. So we're going to what I said right at the beginning of this video that once you get to your destination, it's all about making your body think it's in that new time zone. The sooner you can put yourself in that new time zone, the better. So as soon as you've got wheels up and you're in the air, go ahead and switch your watch to that new time zone that you're going to. And once you've done that, if you look at your watch and see that it's nighttime in your destination, for example, sleeping time, then you should sleep on the plane. 
If it's daytime, you should stay up on the plane. So try to put yourself in that destination and do what you would do in that destination. Now related to sleeping on planes, some people find that hard. I like to bring an eye mask and I like to bring noise canceling headphones. Those help me sleep on planes quite a bit. OC girl, my wife, she likes to eat in the airport before we get on the plane so that as soon as we get on the plane, she can just go to sleep and wipe out. Now, I, sometimes I like to travel business class internationally and so I actually like to enjoy those meals. But if you are doing that, you can often tell the flight attendants, hey, can I get the, the like express option or can you give my, me my food quickly because I want to go to sleep as soon as possible. If you are sleeping during meal service, most flight attendants won't bug you and they'll know you don't want to be bugged because you're sleeping. Now, you don't always want to sleep on every flight that you go to everywhere. If you are traveling on the plane and it's daytime in your destination, in that case, you actually want to stay awake because then you've probably picked flight option two that I talked about, one that arrives at your destination at night. So in that case, you do want to stay up so that you're actually tired when you get to your destination. And then you can go to sleep right away. Tip number six, and I think this is the most important one, when you get to your destination, if it's daytime, go for a walk. Spend as much time outside as possible. One of the best ways to get your body to know it's in a new time zone, adjust the circadian rhythms is for your body to spend time outside, seeing the sun and feeling the fresh air. If you arrive at your destination really early in the morning, like 6 a.m., 8 a.m., have another breakfast. You know, they probably fed you breakfast on the plane, but go ahead and reset yourself and have another breakfast. If you are arriving that early, you likely won't be able to check into your hotel room yet, but many hotels offer um, like pre-arrival suites or gyms that you can use to take a shower when you get there. Consider some of those options because I find getting to a destination, I like to take a shower in the morning. And so taking a shower in the morning, having breakfast in the morning helps me feel like it's morning so that I can go out and be morning. Now afternoons, going to be a little bit rough. And this gets us into the next tip, which is avoid the desire to take a nap. You're going to be tired. You're going to want to take a nap in the afternoon. You're going to want to go back to the hotel. Don't, don't do it. That nap is going to destroy everything. If you do take a nap, like 15 minutes, that's all. Make sure you set your alarm, set three alarms so that you don't give in to a two or three hour nap because if you give in to that two or three hour nap, you're never gonna reset to this new time zone. Now my pro tip for the first day is definitely don't over schedule your first day in any destination. You're like, hey, I'm getting there at 6 a.m. I can do so many things. I would encourage you to basically have almost nothing on that agenda for the first day if you're arriving that early in the morning. Just spend it exploring, wandering around the hotel because you will be tired, you will be foggy. Just leave your first day for what I would call a rest and recharge day. Whenever I'm going someplace, if I'm going to Japan and I'm gonna shoot some videos, that's why I always tell people, I say, hey, my arrival day, whether it's 6 a.m. or whether it's the next day afterwards, like I got in at a perfect time to go to sleep, my first full arrival day for me is a rest and recharge day. And then after I've had that full day of sunshine and outdoor exercise, then I'm ready the next day to actually do real things. Tip number eight, eat when you're hungry. Your body is going to be all out of whack. You might want to eat every two hours. You might want to eat every 10 hours. Just eat when your body's hungry. You don't have to stick to the prescribed meal times of lunches at noon and dinners at six, particularly because you're going to be likely going to sleep earlier the first couple days. And I'll hit that in the next tip. Uh, consider eating your dinner earlier. You know, for me on my jet lag schedule, lunch, 10 a.m., dinner, 4 p.m., no big deal. You, you've just got to find the places that are open in your destination to actually do that. Tip number nine, go to bed at an early local bedtime, your first and second night at the destination. What do I mean by an early local bedtime? I mean like 7 p.m. is a pretty early local bedtime. Now, you might really be a wet towel when it comes to like, hey, we should get together for dinner on your first night. It's okay, you could wait a couple days to have those. Go to bed early seven because you might spend a couple hours wrestling with the sheets trying to go to bed but you'll have plenty of time knowing that there's not like that you know alarm in six hours that's going to wake you up so you only get three hours sleep go to bed early you know this might mean you might wake up at four or five a.m the next day and if that's the case then just go for an early morning sunrise walk get that cup of coffee and watch the sunrise but i do think it is really important to go to sleep 
and an early local bedtime your first couple days. Now, knowing that you're going to sleep early and you might be waking up early, pro tip might be useful to stock up on a few snacks in your hotel room just in case you're at a destination that truly nothing is open at 4 or 5 a.m. when your breakfast hunger strikes. Tip number 10, now that you know all of these tips and tricks to help you avoid or overcome jet lag, you also should figure out whether you actually wanna do any of this at all. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're going someplace that's only three or four hours off your local schedule, you might not really want to reset to a new schedule. You just might want to keep your current time zone schedule. For example, when we took a family trip to Hawaii a couple months ago, we just stayed on our Southern California schedule. Why? Because it's only a three hour difference from Hawaii, which meant that, yeah, we're getting up really early to eat breakfast. We're like at breakfast when they open. We're also just going to sleep at that early local bedtime always, but it helped us in that case not really have to adjust to a new time zone. And then when we come back, we don't have to adjust either. So you can consider doing that on trips that are only a few hours. Now, speaking of kids, this brings me to tip number 11. If you're traveling with babies or toddlers, which we have a two-year-old, it's actually the easiest in infants because they sleep like all the time, right? Like they sleep every three hours and so uh, they don't really even know what jet lag is because they're just sleeping around the clock. Now for toddlers, it will probably take them a little longer to adjust than you as an adult and the one difference of all my tips here is that they are actually gonna need naps. They're gonna need that midday nap because they take a midday nap anyway. But when they take their midday nap in the new destination, don't let them sleep more than they would for their regular usual midday nap. If they typically take a two hour midday nap, then that's what you should let them take when they get to their destination, which means you will have to wake them up, which means they will have to be cranky. Just go ahead and take that pill and do it because waking them up and having them be up and outside is the only way they're going to adjust to that new time zone. And at nighttime with your toddlers, yes, it might be rough because they might wake up in the middle of the night. They might not want to go back to sleep. They might want to play games. Avoid the urge to turn on the lights. Avoid the urge to just play with them. Try to keep it as dark as possible. Keep it as quiet as possible. Keep them as subdued as possible so that they can go back to sleep if they get that urge. Now, if you are traveling with toddlers or infants, you might want some tips about traveling with kids. I've got a whole video about that right here. And if you're going to be going through an airport, flying on an airplane, you might enjoy my video about tips to get you through airport security fast and easy. As usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in one of these videos. Links are also in the description below.